like that answer. What did you do today? You on campus? I right, shout out to the university hustle. What did you do today? Yeah, what did you do? Chilling at home? School holidays? All right, man. Yo, a shout out to everybody for coming through, man. We're officially at hashtag the sit down. That's the official hashtag. You know, if you guys want to take little flicks or, um, you know, hop on Instagram or Twitter. Um, shout out to Sidestep and Adidas Originals, man, for holding us down. Of course, they made this possible, uh, this dope initiative. And of course, brought us my man here sitting on my left. Uh, show some love for DJ Speaster, man. Right. Cheer. What's up? Yeah, man, so tonight, uh, you know, we're going to take it easy. You know, it's all about um, having a discussion and experiences around originality and creativity. And that's why Speedster is here, because he's somewhat of a, a renaissance man. You know what I mean? If it's not music or breaking new artists, if it, then it's uh, fashion and merch. If it's not that, then it's radio. If it's not that, then it's television. You know what I mean? Or it's events. Or it's where it started. It's the it's the DJing. You know what I mean? He's taking all our jobs. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, Speech. I, I haven't been booked for an MC gig in a while. And I think that has something to do. <laughs> hey, you go in today, you're MCing this gig. There we go. <laughs> How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How you doing, Fred? I'm all right. How's man. everybody doing? You guys good? Thank you so much for coming through, man. I was really worried. I get kind of worried with these things because you never really know if people are actually are your fans or not so thank you very much for coming through yeah i'm good man it's, it's that mail baby it's that mail yo so so what we're gonna do um you know we're just gonna have a, a chat and then i'm gonna give you guys an opportunity as well to uh you know ask any questions you know he's here at your disposal um what do we have here in the crowd we have rappers what designers producers who, who what do you guys do I, singers you're a singer i uh you know we have students obviously I know we have a few rappers here. Shout out to Gray, shout out to Sweet Kid. You know what I mean? Um, any, everybody else is just here because Speece is pretty? Or, all right, cool. Well, look, he's, he's, here, he's, here, at, <laughs> he's here at your disposal, man, um, uh, you know, to learn from. And that's what this is about. I, I want to start off by um, speaking about the event that you held uh, a few months ago. I think it was at Zone 6. I... I I thought about that earlier today because um, I saw how hard you were going, um, you know, marketing it and just trying to make sure everything was 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 prim and proper. I, that stood out to me specifically because, I mean, you've done so much in your career, you know what I mean, and you were still on the ground hustling like you know you'd never accomplished anything before. Um, why did you feel it was important to consolidate like all these things that you've been doing um, over the past couple of years and? you know, turn it, like, culminate it with, with, with an event? Like, what was the idea behind that? I think, like, like right now, um, I'm at a point in my career. So just to give you guys a bit of background, so um, I started DJing in grade 10, which was 2008. Um, I was DJing at high school parties and that kind of a thing. And then I matriculated in 2010, and I moved to Johannesburg 2011. So that's basically where I started my hustle or whatever. So... Fast forward 2019, I was like, okay, so you've done all these things, but what do you actually have to show for it? Because what starts happening um, at a certain point in the industry is that you start getting to a point where you feel maybe like you've been giving the industry, the world, all of you, and you kind of forgot about you, you kind of forgot about your family, and you're also growing up as a person, so you've got to think about tomorrow, and you start thinking, um, what is actually important? Who's going to be there? Who's not going to be there? And when you leave, what do you have to show for it? What legacy did you leave? So um, I thought building a concert was one of the scariest things ever because like this thing, you never know if people are coming, you know, but um, they came, which was really, really cool. And I, I, I guess they came because I really, really pushed it to my, to, to, to my fans, you know. And, and that could have been a deal breaker because if had, had that gig been empty, I would have been like, okay, let's say, maybe what you have been building uh, for the past eight years actually doesn't make sense. You know, maybe let's go back to the drawing board. Maybe you must listen to your parents and, and, and follow a different route, you know. So um, I think it was about that, just trying to sort of understand how much value you actually have as a human being because you could have a million followers on Twitter, but those aren't real people, True. you know. 
impact is different. Yeah, so um, that, that's, that's what it was all about, just, just being able to gauge where we're at. Uh, you and I have had like tons of conversations about everything like in the game of, uh, over the years. And um, you know, one conversation I always seem to go back to um, with just anybody who finds themselves in this juncture is, um, I mean, you can get a cosign, right? That'll maybe get you like one step in the door, right? You can uh, be put on, you can, but like I've, passion is what, it w is what keeps you here, right? Like if, if people are always crying about cosigns, but passion is what keeps you here. And you're, you're one of the most passionate people I've ever met since, you know, 2013 or 2012 when I first met you. Um, um, can you speak a bit about the role of passion in your career, especially in the beginning? Because I know you did say, you know, you came, to, you came up to Joburg with the intention to study, or at least that's what, <laughs> that's what you told your folks, you know what I mean? And having to navigate between this thing that you're passionate about and, and, and you know, coming into the game and making music and spreading love and that sort of thing, and then the responsibility and expectation you know, to from your folks or your family to go to school and how you navigate it around that. Because I know, uh, you know, we spoke about this with Shekinah a bit as well. And I know that a lot of us either have been in that position or are in that position or will be in that position at some point where you're conflicted between the thing that you're passionate about versus whatever expectation, you know, that right. your family or whoever have, have of you. Um, I, I, I think for me, like, I, I, I always say DJing is my forte, you know. Um, so, not in a bad way, but if tomorrow Metro FM were to wake up and say, Speedster, you're fired, it's okay, I'm still DJ Speedster. If Live FM fires me tomorrow, I, like, my life is still going to carry on. That's always been my forte, that's always been my passion. Um, until today, I, uh, my manager there can, 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 can tell you, if we're going to an event where sometimes maybe they say, they can't um, um, give me the right equipment, but they have all the alcohol in the world for me. I'll tell them, no, don't even buy that alcohol. Rather give me a bottle of water and make sure you have the right equipment, you know? And that just comes from, 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 from I guess, the, 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 the class that I was taught by. Um, we speak of your milkshakes, your dimples, your VGs, your spectacular and DJ nails. And they had a certain way of doing things. It was very, very, it was it, it it all boiled down to respect and it all boiled down to being a normal human being they had a very simple thing of doing things so when i started djing it was a, it, it, it was a thing that when you get into the dj booth whether i know you or not fred i gotta go in there and say hi my name is dj speedster can i please uh, when you when you're done i'm ready not what time are you finishing kind of a thing you know so all of those all of those small all of those small things um, kind of, kind of add to your passion. If if you're not passionate about something, and maybe you just want to DJ because you think you're gonna, you, it's gonna make you famous, and maybe your crew thinks you're the coolest thing on earth. There's a couple of girls that think you're the coolest thing on earth. You're arriving at the club sloppy, drunk, whatever. You s you don't have a name out yet, but you already just want all of those things that you see speeds to have, and you don't understand that speeds has been there eight years building this thing that you're you're seeing. You know, so I mean, for me. Um, Passion is important because um, it also interlinks with my happiness, you know. Um, so you can ask anybody that knows me, I'm most happiest when I'm playing, you know. So why would I want to ruin that kind of a vibe? So I guess that's what's kept me going. And of course, um, it does pay the bills. Um, I'm glad I've, I always wanted to get to a point where um, I can DJ for the passion and DJ for my happiness and not for money, you know. And that's why, and that's where it goes back to when you're opening up saying, I'm on the radio, I'm on TV, I'm on whatever. I always wanted to set it up like that so that if I don't have paying gigs or whatever, I still do have somewhat of an income which still interlinks with my forte, which is being a DJ, you know? That's dope. I think that's really dope. Um, it's, 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 cause it's easy to get caught up in, um, like you said, the idea of whatever it is about, the idea of being a personality or the idea of fame and the idea, because people think that that's what attracts everything else but it's the other way around like the foundation is really the passion right um so okay uh so you're let's say it's 2012 ish 2013 so you're in the game you know what i mean you, you're building a name for yourself as a, as a as a dj i know you were in the circuit playing at sway and you know what i mean als i remember that period um at what point during 
um, that part of the journey, do, do you decide, I can't just be a DJ, I need to make my own songs or make videos or because you're you're one you you're a really good example of how to diversify skill sets in the game you know what i mean a lot of times um guys get in the game and um it's part of a movement or an era and when that era um goes away when it when it's done you know we're kind of just left sitting thinking you know what am i going to do now you know but you've you you literally took it from the bottom DJing, your forte, your passion, and then we saw DJ Speedster make a song, and then we went from DJ Speedster making a song to DJ Speedster being on YFM, and then, you know what I mean, growing into into uh, television with Fuzu, and what, what, what was the point that you decided that, hey, I can't just be a DJ, and what was the thinking behind it? To, to, to tell you the honest truth, I, I, I also, when I started DJing, it was, I wouldn't say a joke, but it was one of those things where it's like, because my brother was a DJ, right? And he's no longer a DJ now. Shout out Soul Kid. You know, so it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, you might like it now, but you're going to grow up, you're going to have to get a real job, you know? So it was really never, there was never really a plan. It was like, let's just figure it out as we go. But then in 2013, I had like a really, really bad car accident. I uh, wrote off my car. I was, I like almost died, you know? And I remember when I had my car accident, my, 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 my parents weren't really worried about me and the car accident. It was more of a thing of like, you gotta go sort your life out, you gotta go figure it out, you gotta go get a new car. You know, that, like, that was the whole thing, you know? Um, so I think at that point is where I also sort of, sort of put my focus, my focus on, where I was like, okay, so it's serious now, you know? It's, it's really, really serious. Um, I, gotta, I gotta have a place to stay, I gotta, I, I, I gotta, I gotta do something on my life, you know, because where I come from, it's expected that uh, he's back, you know. He went to go try it in Johannesburg, he's back. Now he's chilling with us at the corner. We're smoking weed, like a lot of cards, whatever, homonati, you know. And I always feared that thing. I was like, if there's one thing I'm not doing is going back home, you know. So that had a lot to do with, 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 with me pushing. But um, at the same time, um, I got really, really lucky. I was finding myself in rooms, in, in situations that were, that could help me, you know. Um, I was finding myself in situations like, for instance, in 2011 when I, I opened for Drake, you know, that was my first big gig and how I got that gig is because I was in a room and they were speaking about it and they were, they were saying they're going to play background music and I was like, don't play background music, I'm a DJ, I'll come DJ for free, you know. Um, so I was just finding myself in situations where I was really, really lucky and that kind of helped everything. But I would say the tipping point was when I, when life kind of kicked in and, and, and it was like, okay, so you, you really got to decide what you're doing with your future, yeah. And so when you get to that point, how does that work? Did you consciously tell yourself like, I'm going to go present or I'm going to go do radio? Or did was that just a result of how things panned out? Was it like a combination of opportunity yeah. and luck? Because I don't know, I know that's a really like pertinent thing for people. It's like how... Do, if I've been doing this my whole life or for X amount of years, yeah. how do I make the transition or the jump from what I'm doing yeah. now to the next level, whatever that may be? See, so the, ni the nice thing is that when I, start, when I started DJing, I was also on radio. This is high school, you know? Um, I didn't have my own show. I had like a segment. So I would literally rush from high school, go to radio in my school clothes. I would do a mix and I would give them weekly updates as to like what's happening, you know? So I was already getting into that scene. So by the time YFM was like, come do a radio show, I was like, of course, you know? Um, I forgot the first part of your question and you said something very important. I don't know what you said anymore, but um, I'll remember it and I'll tell you guys. <laughs> Yo, it's all good. I don't remember either, man. <laughs> We're just happy to be here. Um, um, so... I think uh, one of the things, as one of the reasons personally I, you know, have so much respect for you in the game as well is because you are one of the people who've played a key position in um, helping to unearth emerging talent. And that's, I mean, for people on both sides, so for people on this side and for people on that side, if you are involved in music or arts in any kind of capacity, you know that that's not an easy thing. Like blowing up is not an easy thing, right? No one wants to just like willingly give you opportunities. You know, no one wants to let you open for them. No one wants to give you a feature, even if you're dope, right? Um, there's kind of like, you know, a lot of weirdness and politics as far as that is concerned, but you've, from the jump, been the kind of guy who 
you know, I remember you um, having sets on, um, you know, big stages at the Dome and bringing artists out. You know, you um, have multiple uh, features with, with, I mean, Mayo in itself was just like a, such a special moment in South African history because we saw four careers start from something that you conceived. And there's so many more examples of that. Um, can you speak a bit uh, to why you specifically are uh, invested in, in, in trying to uh, um, proliferate new talent? Sure. Um, I'm just, just before I answer your question, I remembered what I wanted to say in your previous question. What Go I wanted ahead. to say is um, once I uh, didn't have other options is where I, I sort of locked in, you know, I, I sort of uh, went back to the drawing board and had a bit of a strategy as to what we're trying to do and have sort of goals and then slowly YFM came, slowly V Entertainment came, and then Mayo happened, which sort of like changed everything, you know, so I had to go back to the drawing board and just like sort of lock in, that's how um, everything happened, I guess. No doubt. Um, in, in, in terms of uh, putting people on, uh, like I mentioned in the previous question, I was always lucky um, I happened to be around the right people as well who were always putting me on, so I would be a fool to not do the same, you know. Um, so I try, I, 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 I try, I try my best um, to help where I can. Um, it does get difficult, especially with time. You know, I tell guys now all the time, like, I can't help all of you guys, you know. And also it's one of those things where like sometimes it's like some, some, somebody uh, may feel like they have a talent, but they're actually not talented, you know. And I also suffer that from... Happens. I, that I, happens. I also suffer from being that guy who's like, you're really whack, you know. Like, I, Scoop can do it. I, I, I really suffer from that, you know? Um, but if, where, where I can, um, I definitely will, yeah. That's, that's, just, that's just in me, man. I mean, I would be a fool to, to, to not do that. And, and, and times change, bro. I'm not gonna be here forever, you know? Um, I would love to see a new DJ Speeds. I would love to see a new AKA, you know? I'd love to see a new Casper in your vest, you know? Um, that's, that's life, that's, that's exciting. Who wouldn't want that, you know? Yeah. Um, what do you think? is uh, or one of one of the areas or a few of the areas that we can improve um, in the game. I think just in terms of speaking to what you said, seeing a new DJ Spista, Casper and AKA, because you've been involved in this for so long. So you know kind of the, the ins and outs, you know what are some of the challenges, where they'd be from an industry perspective or where they'd be from a um, artist perspective. Do you, do, does anything come to mind when you think Man, you know, the game would be so much better, the game would be so much, would flow so much better if this happened or if this was this way. I mean, the, the, the reality of things is, is there's a lot of gatekeepers in, in the game. And with that, the, the problem with, with there being gatekeepers is that we are not a predominantly hip hop country, nation, you know, so there's only this little piece, but now if, people are holding the piece for 40 years, of course it's going to be difficult to find a new Casper in your rest. Of course it's going to be difficult uh, difficult to find a new AKA. So I think right now what's important, we're back to this question which we're at 2014, 13, is finding our sound as South African hip hop. Because as long as there's going to be one hip hop song amongst 20 piano songs um, up for song of the year the longer the, the, the you understand the pie is still small because it, it's not enough hits there's a lot of things that are not happening so yeah um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see people one be authentic I think that's how we'll find the sound and for the gatekeepers I mean the gatekeepers know themselves you know there's this gatekeeper I, I can even say that you know and um, unfortunately, it, 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 will be, it will be like that forever if we don't find our sound, if the sound doesn't grow so that there can be more opportunity for the sound, which I think right now we're doing a fucking bad job as South African hip hop, you know? And I, I will say that myself. Um, I don't know, man. There's just, there's, there's a big disconnect between the people and, and between what's actually going on. And personally, that's, that's where the internet scares me, is because you may think that everything that's happening on the internet or everything that's happening on Twitter is real life, right? Which is not the case. Now, the biggest concern about that 
is that a lot of you guys, I'm sure, get your information from the internet, you know? Um, you sometimes sit in a room with, with someone who's like maybe done well for themselves from learning from the internet and they will tell you because they have learned it off the internet and it's working, they're sitting in the same boardroom with you um, and it took them two, five years less, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, that's good and well, but there's a lot of things the internet doesn't teach you. And, and, and what the problem with that is you find yourself 10 years down the line going, on, uh, going through depression, going through funny things because you don't understand what's actually going on around you. So I think we need to educate ourselves more as well. Um, know what we're talking about, know what we're doing. Um, know our people, understand our people, um, understand as a DJ speaks the brand, you can't go around, um, you know, saying whatever you're saying, acting all cool, because at the end of the day, if we're honest, you can actually, you can actually only get 30 people in a room. So how, how powerful are you actually? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, back to, just back to those things, back to basics, um, I think is very, very important. Um, reading, a lot, um, watching a lot. Um, I'm in the club a lot, of, a lot, uh, a lot. You know, um, yes, I'm partying. I love to party, but most of the time, uh, and people ask me, "Why are you chilling by yourself?" Like, let's talk. And I'm like, I'm not here to necessarily talk. I'm here to see how people behave, uh, what people listen to, how people dress. I'm constantly trying to do my research when I get onto my phone. If I'm busy building a shopping store. Um, that's all I'm, I'm focusing on. That's all I'm, I'm, I'm getting into, you know? So I forgot your question again. You're a, stu you're a student of the game. You're a student of the game. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, always learning, always game. learning, yeah. So I like that you touched on originality um, because, I mean, that's the, that's the reason we're here. You know what I mean? Uh, shout out to Adidas Originals for holding us down. Um, and uh, <laughs> you got to get that plug in, man. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Um, but I, I like that you touched on, on originality because I, the next thing I was going to ask you, and maybe you've already touched on it, is uh, you, you know creativity is such a is such a, a, a strange thing because it's 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 hard to explain um, what creativity is to somebody, right? It's just kind of something that um, like lives inside of you, and whichever way you choose to express it, whether it be through music, fashion. Um, through through literary devices and many of these uh, uh, fields that you've touched on or been involved in um, creative uh, creatively and I wonder to myself what is the th the defining thing that you think that you did that <clears throat> brought you to this point what is the thing that makes because there are a thousand DJs a thousand presenters a thousand people on radio right why is DJ Spisa sitting here beside me instead of uh, DJ Adidas, for instance? Like fans and people will, will be like, how come like you're not friends with like artists or whatever, you know? And uh, I, I never really say it, but I think that's, that's, that's what sets me apart from a lot of people is because a lot of the time you find yourself hanging with someone you actually don't like. You, you know what I mean? It's like, I want to be the successful DJ, therefore I need to hang with Fresh. But then you're hanging with Fresh and you find yourself be like, Fresh is actually a loser. It's just an example, please don't. <laughs> you know? Um, so I think it, 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 it took me a while, um, but I wanted to do it like that because I never wanted anybody to sort of look back and say, yeah, I, put, I did that for you, I did this for you, you got that because of me or whatever, you know? So that's also where the music and the putting new talent thing comes in because I hate having to like nag, yo, please get into the studio, can we make a song, whatever, you know, I'd rather have someone that is just as talented, which maybe I can help in a way and will make a song, if not greater, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, just, just being able to understand who my friends are, uh, being able to understand what I like, what I don't like, and yeah that's 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 it you know and and at first it was almost like a thing of like i'm being funny or whatever like someone would ask me and say i never see you posting like other south african um, artists albums or whatever and i would say to them but they never post mine you know 
and it'll, it'll be like, no, but it's different. They're artists. They're supposed to be making music. I'm like, what does that right. mean? I'm, I'm making music as well, you know. Um, the artists don't support me, so why why should I support right. them? Kind of a thing, you know. And it doesn't come from a hate or a beef thing. It's just a right. thing of like, I want to hold my own, you know. I want to be standing on my two right. feet. Crazy story. 2014. AKA fires his tour DJ, DJ Fnatic, on stage, swears him, fires him on stage, calls me to be his DJ. Of course, I'm excited. This is hopefully the tipping point of my career. But then I go back and I think, he swore his DJ on stage. He's going to swear me on stage. <laughs> I remember that. You know what I mean? I, we, we spoke about it on the phone too. Yeah, I, I, so yeah. I was, as a human being, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on that stage and we're going to fight there. It's, it's not going to work like that, you know? And literally three months later, I got into YFM. And then he came onto my show on YFM. Do, Fire. Do you understand? It's like, That's a flex right there. <laughs> That's a flex right there. Hell yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to ask you two final questions before I open it up to you guys. So you can start thinking about... Ask me the tough questions. Oh, ask you the tough questions? Yeah, ask me the tough questions. Um, <laughs> I think that's what they're here for. These guys are not going to hold back. But So I, what, one thing is, um, what, do you, what do you have to say uh, to the... I, I don't want to say an argument, but to the conversation that, um, you know, DJs have no place in... In, in making music, I mean that's a conversation that's been happening for right. years, and we've heard we've heard um, arg arguments from different sides and different pers perspectives right. forever. You know, on the obviously on the one hand, it's like, uh, hey, your role conventionally right. in hip hop is to help guys break, and then I've heard a multitude of other um, um, arguments from the DJs themselves. But um, just to rehash on that, what do you what do you think? What do I you have to say to that? I think that's so. Going back to even that, that that point I was making about the small little piece, like rappers, South African rappers used to say to us DJs that were making music then that they were never going to get on our songs because like there's not enough airplay, there's not enough whatever and whatever and whatever, right? Um, but what they don't realize is that when we were doing that, I don't, I don't know if you remember, but that was South African hip hop's gold, golden era because we were able to take a Fred and a Gamu and say, look guys, we know you guys are never gonna work together, but I'm cool with both of you. Let's make this song for me. You know what I mean? And that's how a lot of the collaborations came about, a lot of the songs. But then when songs, DJ songs started becoming hit songs is when they started having more of a problem and then they would be like, I don't wanna be on your I don't wanna be on your song or whatever. And for me it's like we as as DJs we've never been like like we, we never wanted to like throw around uh, our, our weight around with that kind of a thing because at the end of the day our, 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 our job is to serve is to serve the consumer always make sure we educate them always make sure that we're playing new music always make sure that we're also being innovative in everything we're doing and that's how we started making music and so forth and that's why you'll find that like a lot of my friends are DJ friends because we do the same thing we have the same idea we push in the same movement um, but funny enough, what actually happened when rappers didn't want to get onto hip hop songs anymore, um, it led us to a point where we are at now. Because what happened is as DJs, we were like, okay, maybe we must take a step back. Maybe we mustn't release as much music. Maybe we mustn't do as many collaborations. Maybe we need to sort of suss out what the artists are doing and sort of go with the flow of what they're doing, not really steer as to what would see happen, you know? And um, guilty as charged once again myself, you know, we took the back seat, I think we, we say from 2016 to now, we took the back seat and that's where we're finding ourselves in a situation where there's no big hip hop songs. Because the artists, they can take two to three years to release. We really, we're releasing music every four or five months, you know? The streets where we were feeding the streets the whole time, radio didn't have a choice but to play that stuff. And we, we haven't been doing that, but next year we're going in hard. Like, I'm, I'm dropping a lot of stuff. That's why now, when I dropped the, the brand new single, I had four, four songs chilling in the studio, and I was, and I was saying, to myself, what are these songs doing? And I released the stuff, let the music go. So, yeah, um, the artists, uh, if we do give them a break like we did, they don't do anything. So, <laughs> you heard that? Y'all ain't doing anything. Oh, oh, you, got, you guys doing stuff? All right. Um, 
Uh, fi- and then, and then uh, before we open up to the guys, I know you've been very vocal on, I've heard a couple of your interviews and, you know, you've spoken about like some of the challenges that you've gone through recently um, in the past year or two years uh, with your career and feeling frustrated with kind of feeling like you're hitting the ceiling. Um, and I think it, it took an interesting trajectory because uh, in one interview you said that you, you, you went back to something that was part of your foundation that kind of helped you, um, you know, with a sense of clarity, which is uh, skateboarding. You know, uh, we see a lot of uh, a lot of content from you um, uh, with skateboarding stuff. Um, what what are your plans with that? I know, like, you've been spending a lot of time back home in the fall. Um, you've alluded to um, building, rebuilding rather the, the the skate community and the infrastructure over there, which I think is like really really dope. Um, yeah, where where are you taking that? Um, so as we, as we currently speaking, I'm busy building a skate shop in Johannesburg, so it'll be open on the 12th of October, so you can check it out. It'll be an online store. There's a flagship store as well. Yo, show some love for that, man. Oh, yeah. Show Thank some you. love for that. Hell yeah. But um, yeah, man, I think um, a lot of, and it sucks, you know, so, so here's the thing about life and also about growing up is that the moment you've said something, it's gone, you know, like it's weak and it's not coming back, you know, so a lot of this, a lot of the, some of the things that I said when I look at back, when I look back now, I'm like, ah, I shouldn't have. But I was in a really bad space. Uh, I've been in a really, really bad space for probably the past two years, you know, where it's just like there's there's too much going on, you know. Um, we speak about all my jobs. I speak about my love life. Um, we speak about my family. I speak about my friends. It's just like it's it, there's just been a lot going on you know and um i found myself questioning a lot of things like what am i actually doing like what is the what what's ha- what's actually happening you know um so yeah i guess that's 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 where a lot of like my venting came from whatever but, but looking back now i i don't like it you know because there's there's there's, there's other way there's other way to deal with things there's there's, there's better way to deal with things than, than, than venting and with all of that said, I, I I also just started just not giving a fuck about other people, you know, because I realized over the over, over these years in the game is that I was always giving, 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 giving. And when it's when it when it was time for me I was never getting anything in return, you know. So for me it was just basically like a yo man, like, fuck you too kind of a thing, you know, kind of a vibe. And I've always been that kind of a person which is something I'm working on because I'm growing up and I understand you can't go around just swearing, you can't go around just being mad. So I now choose what I put my energy into. Yeah. What, what kind of space is DJ Speast in today? Uh, DJ Speast is in a very good space today. Um, as I said, uh, we're busy building the store, so I just, I've been busy with that a lot. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm at peace with a lot of things. Uh, to give you an example, this will be the first New Year's Eve in eight years that I won't be gigging. I won't. I, I'm gonna take off because it's like done it for so many years. You chasing money, you chasing money, but you don't even enjoy it. You, you you don't even see your family. You know, it's just like you're 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 full of money, but you're not full as a person. You're not whole as a person. There's a lot of things that are missing as a person. So right now, um, I'm in a good space in the sense of like um, family first, no matter what. Um, I don't know how many weddings I've missed because I'm going to gigs. Um, that's changed, you know. If I got to be there for my family, I got to be there. Um, especially with like how the world is right now, with so much crime and stuff, like so many murders. I was just at a funeral yesterday. Like the guy's like 28, got killed over a cell phone, you know. So like, life is so short, you know. And 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 like, I I I don't want to die because I was rushing to fucking toy and door for a gig, you know what I mean? Um, I used to do that. I used to Toronto, Falcom, left, right, center. You know, you're going crazy. You know, so I've sort of have a balance with my life now. I have time to skate. I have time to be my partner. I have time to be with my family. I have time to DJ. I have time to do everything. That's super fire, man. That's super fire. On that note, uh, we're gonna open it up to anyone out here who has any comments, who has any questions, who has any thoughts. Uh, you you don't need to censor yourself. Whether you want to ask DJ Spisa about something personal, or you want to ask about his uh, career, or you're a, you're an artist out here trying to figure out how to make things pop, how to make things happen. Uh, what's good? Anyone out here? A question? A comment? Ladies first. 
Don't be shy, guys. Don't be shy. We'll start over here. Tell us your name first. How's it, guys? How's it, peace? What's up, brother? Fred. Uh, my name is KB. Um, I recently moved from Peter Marysburg to Joburg. You know, I'm a vocalist, as I said earlier. Um, you know, I've been following you a lot on social media, your music, everything that you do, you know. And there's a, obviously there's a lot of ad admiration of, 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 of what you do in terms of trying to, to put the new school or the new kids on the block, you know, putting them out. We really appreciate that. And one of the things that you posted yesterday, I think it was on, it was on, it was on your story, you said you just posted a lot of like list of things on how, on how to improve. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, those are like good, you know, affirmations to use, but, you know, to actually do them is a, is a totally different thing. And one of them that stood out to me was like receiving feedback. So my question is like, for a guy like me, you know, all the way from Peter Marysburg, yeah. really focused, you know, and I don't want to do like the blame game thing of, of, of blaming the artist of not, you know, opening the industry up, but how does a guy like me or a girl get feedback from Speedstar, you know, how how do I get my music to you? you know, this is what is how is what I'm asking. You. I mean, I guess I guess you could you could email me your music, right? Um, but like I said in the beginning, I, I get hundreds of emails, so it may happen to be that I hope uh, I happen to open her email and I didn't open your email kind of a thing, you know, so you can never really tell. But to answer your question is you need to figure out that how. You know what I mean? But you remember when I, when, I, when I spoke about my accident and I said, how am I going to pay for rent? You know, I, you, you, need, you need to figure out that. You need to figure out that how. And with figuring out that how, just be careful. You mentioned being from Peter Maritzburg and you're coming here. Um, this place is a jungle. This this is one big mess here, you know. So you gotta really be careful, like, and and stay focused as to what you want. Like you mentioned, you focus. You know what you want, you know. So make sure that you stick to those values as a human being, to those goals, in terms of what you would like to achieve as an artist, you know. So um, you gotta figure out the how. That's I think that's that's the tricky part. You know what I mean? Um, you could ask me, I could try to give you my formula, but my formula could work for me, it couldn't work for Fred, or for Fred's formula, you know, vice versa. So you you, you got to try and figure it out. But the nice thing is that the, you've taken the first step. You got into the shower, you put some clothes, and then you're here, you know, so. Thank you. Thanks. Shout out. Uh, next question. Let's go. Your name first. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jay. Um, what is it that you learn from the industry that you wish that you knew before you actually made it into the industry? I, I, I kind of hate myself for this one because it's almost like a thing that they tell you as a kid. They tell you the music industry is dirty. They tell you it's, it's fake and whatever. And you think to yourself, no, man, like, you know, I know myself. I'll figure, my, I'll figure it out, you know. But the more you go, the more things happen, the more you're now swearing on Twitter, the more I'm, do you understand? Like a lot of things happen. So I wish I paid more attention to those things then because I wouldn't be regretting my tweets now, if that makes sense. You know, you know what I mean? Maybe because I would have prepared myself for such an instance, I would have been able to, you know, sort of so solve it without having to be loud and whatever because what I hated the most about like when I used to go to radio interviews is like oh, so you're always venting on Twitter and it's like I, that was two years ago you know so um, I wish I really paid attention to things that were being said um, just to prepare myself a little a, a little bit better yeah yeah hello yeah um I just wanted to ask like oh yeah it's great what's up um when you were when you came up with your name, how did the name DJ Speech to come up? And when you decided to put the word DJ, like in your head, didn't you think this is kind of fucking cliche? Everybody has DJ in front of it. No. Um, so I, I I I used to be an athlete. I used to be a hundred meters in a long jump and the relay athlete, right? So my nickname was Speedy back in school. Um, but when it was time to choose a DJ name, I couldn't be DJ Speedy because that's whack one. And two, there was a 
it, it was like a techno, like, you know, like a rave DJ, so I couldn't use that name. And one of my friends used to call me Speedster, so I was like, oh, I think that's, that's, that's going to work. And then I was only putting the DJ there just so that people could identify what I do. Um, but I'm slowly, um, slowly just becoming Speedster because I do so many other things. Right. Um, but but mainly then it was just to sort of get the brand out because it's like hey I'm speedster it's like okay what do you do you know so having the DJ they just helped people identify the brand which is also something that that helped me going back to one of the questions Fred asked earlier as to that tipping point kind of a vibe as to where things started like sort of going well and whatever um, what I managed to do really well was brand myself really well so. Um, DJ Capital, a very good friend of mine, made that tag, you know, that I see you speech the killing him some. That was he he made that, you know. Um, I had that and I also used to play off a laptop and I had a sticker of my name on my laptop. So when I was DJ, even if it was dark or whatever, if you looked at the DJ booth, you would see a laptop with my sticker. Um, if you weren't looking at the DJ booth and you're doing your own thing, I'd play my tag. So you would constantly hear this tag. And then when you got to the socials, you could associate everything. So that's sort of how I, I got my branding out there, which is something very important for upcoming artists is, is marketing. Like, you guys look super cool, by the way. You know what I mean? Um, I'll definitely remember you. You know what I mean? So it's always just finding ways to to sort of get people to remember you, you know? Yeah. Hello, everyone. I go by the name of Khali. So, like, I wanted to ask if you had a chance to talk to the younger version of yourself right now since you are, you say that you're at the growing state what would you tell your old, your older self and again uh, I, I, I'm from all the way from Soweto so like I wanted to ask what would you do to give Soweto an opportunity to be out there also sure um, to answer your 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 first question I, I would tell my young self to to be more involved in things you know um, um, athletics, uh, for instance, which is something I did as a, from primary school, whatever. When I got to grade nine, I started smoking. Now I think I'm cool, whatever. And I left it, you know. Um, I would go to school. I would, I would then like go chill with my friends or whatever. But I had a lot of potential for a lot of things, you know. I could have done athletics really well. I was a really good chess player. There were so many other things that I could have done, but I thought I was too cool, you know. So I would definitely tell my young self to get in there, you know, get in there because those, 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 those small little things help you in the long run because I found myself um, in my 20s where I don't believe in myself now. Now I'm like, am I actually good at something? You know, I find myself doubting myself about how I look. Ish. Do I, you know, like you, you, you're you not sure of who you are and, and what's actually happening because when you were young, you were sort of leaving those things, rushing to be cool, rushing to be 18, rushing to be driving, rushing to be doing all these things that looked so amazing, you know. Um, in terms of helping Soweto, I, I want to try to help every, everybody, you know, I don't want to be like, yo, I'm going to try to do A, B, C to help Soweto, you know, I, I, I want to help everybody, you know, um, it wouldn't be fair for me to sort of place it on one, uh, on, on a certain area, yeah. Uh, um, hello guys, Kamala uh, Mandogoza, um, what's up man, everyone nice? Cool. Good, good. <laughs> um, so, um, I, I wanted to ask, um, personally, um, I'm not in like making music or whatever, I study film and television, but knowledge is knowledge. So I wanted to ask, you know, as a young kid, sometimes when you try to break into industry, you kind of will not hungry for an opportunity, but something good comes your way. From an industry cat, you kind of take it as a good thing. So how can, like, as someone with no leverage, kind of make sure that the relationship is not bullshit and that industry cat that you are associating yourself with or is putting you on is not just taking you for a ride? Because, you know, it's like a thing of, yo, ish, this dude can put me on, so I'm going to, you know, try to not please him, but you know what I'm saying? You know, do best by him, but it turns out it's just a fucking ride and I'll be screwed. So how do you avoid such relationships? I think I think maybe maybe, maybe sort of try and um, remember you, you what, what, however you feel and what, whatever you're going through, you put that on yourself, you know? So maybe try and channel your, your thoughts into other things, you know? Maybe... Maybe don't see it in, in that light. Maybe see it as, um, maybe see it as, as, as okay. I'm actually going there just to listen, you know. Um, like you said, because I could be bullshitting it, you know. I could be like, yo, I'm gonna put you on, but then it turns out that I can't. So maybe just take everything 
as a learning curve as opposed to maybe seeing it as a waste of time kind of kind of a thing you know? because then if you, if you can sort of like channel your energy into that then you're also sort of able to to, to be like okay maybe i won't go to sit down with speedster because maybe he won't give me what i'm looking for but i know fred's got one in mainland maybe let me, let me wait a week do you know what i mean as opposed to saying fuck speedster's an asshole you can be like no speedster maybe can't help me with what i need right now but i need to learn about speakers and fred would be the right guy maybe to go and listen to you know and then maybe um daniel is the other guy for speakers and then maybe jason is the other guy for speakers and maybe take all three perspectives and then see what you what you can take from all of those and be like okay let me sort of see where i can go i don't know if that makes any any sense because i i also that's why i never uh, make promises I'll, I'll never be like yo trust me come i'm gonna make you this person because i i i don't know if i can um you know make you that person I, it's tough it's 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 tough you know and and one thing i can't guarantee you and one thing that i can tell you is that it was tough for me as well it it it, it really really was but i never gave up you know i, I was like i say finding ways um, channeling my energy to sort of right. win, you know, have a, like a winning mentality. So, yeah, that's I guess that's my right. answer to that. Yeah. Well, hi guys, uh, my name is Mzoa, and I have two questions for you. So the first, oh, sorry. Uh, the first question is that I want to ask is how important is club culture in the industry that you work in specifically because you find that a lot of uh, people that work with you or are seen with you are always in the club together, you guys are partying together, so I want to understand, is there something that actually happens there or is it just people just kicking it with one another? And then number two is that as an emerging artist, say for instance, or an upcoming artist, it's 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 very difficult when you don't know where the right channels. So I just want to ask you, if for instance me as Mzwa, I want to get on radio, which channels would you advise me to go to? Say, okay, if you want to get on radio, you can try this or try that. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, to answer your to answer your first your first question, I personally I made a lot of money of of of, of being in the club, you know, and that was actually something i had to explain for years to my girlfriend because it was like you're not working why like why you're there or you're done playing why are you still there i have to be like no i am busy like doing other things you know but the problem with it is that there's two sides to it so it can either go really well or really bad right but how i always used to see it and how i always used to see it um uh, use it was if I'm in the club the whole time and you're seeing me the whole, you're seeing me every week, you know, every week you see me, at some point you're going to get to a point where you're like, what's up, bro? Do, do, do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's just one of those things where it's, it's, it's like, the more people see you, it's easier for them when they're hosting a gig to be like, oh, I saw Spisa last week, let me book him, kind of a thing, you know, so... It has helped me, but it's got its good and it's got its bad because the problem with the club environment is it's a dirty environment. It's a dirty, it's dirty, dirty, dirty in there, you know? So <laughs> it, it, it can go one of two ways. But if you know what you're, what you're there for, you know, yes, definitely be in those spaces. But if you know that you're a kind of a person that can't handle the alcohol, then rather don't put yourself in that situation because now you're going to find yourself maybe you're too drunk or you finally do get to speak to a friend and then you puke on his... Sneak. What movie is that? For? There's a movie like that, eh? After, sorry, like, you know what? You know what? Oh, with Wiz Khalifa, yeah. You know what I mean. So you don't want to find yourself doing, doing, doing something like that. But um, don't just take the club. Um, but being in those scenes, being around, yes, you know what I mean. Is is important. Like if I, I'm seeing you now. If I see you next week and I see the other, week, by the fourth week I'm gonna be like, what's up, bro? What like? You know, you know what I mean. So it's 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 like one of those. Um, to answer your 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 second question, right? That is one I get all the time. Um, it is probably the most difficult one, which I don't even have the answers for. Why? Because I even make music and I even struggle to get it on radio. You know, um, a lot of something people don't know is the only hit song I've ever had. When you remember, a hit song is determined by RAM, so it's determined by how much time it's on radio, how much time it's on TV. Of course, by the people. My only hit song that I've ever had was Mayo. 
how did that happen? Shout out to Cloudy, it was 90% local music. So they had no choice but to play our stuff all day. Do, do, do you know what I mean? And people don't know this, but till then, since then I've never had another number one on radio. I've ne- my songs still struggle to get on radio, you know? But I think, um, um, I know this is a plug, but also do me a favor and also please uh, subscribe to the podcast because we kind of speak about these things a lot as well. Um, right now, I know everyone says you need to submit to the, to the music manager and the music manager doesn't respond to you. It's just a mess. It's, it's a big mess. So I think right now the best way is to flood the streets so that radio has no choice, you know. With that said, though, keep sending to radio. Like, keep sending the music to radio. I used to, when I started DJing, what I used to do is I used to literally go on Facebook and then see where all of my idols were playing. I would see a cool who's the promoter for this gig, friend them on on, on Facebook and start and start and start chatting to them. You know, I, I make sure I knew everybody who was within the eventing space because I really wanted to be in their clubs. You know, so I think um, if you want to be on radio, you need to take the time to see. Okay, I want my songs to play on YFM. Who is the music manager at YFM? Okay, the music manager is Fred. I can't get to Fred. Hmm. How do I get to Fred? Let me go check his Instagram. This is how I used to be, really, literally, with, with gigs. Let me go check his Instagram. Ah, he's chilling with Speedster. Let me go check with Speedster. What's Speedster doing? Speedster maybe can help me. You know, just keep checking the... Because at the end of the day, everything is just links. And unfortunately, back to that thing of it being a small little pie everybody's hogging everything so the radio one is, is a mess it's a big mess because we've got viola and they've got we've got like so it's tough that one is it's just a tough one and you got the you got the major labels the major labels will always get the radio play first but i'm on a major label and i still don't get radio play, you know what i mean so like there's there's just like a lot of a, a, a lot of things but for now the internet is your friend the internet is your best friend the internet is your best friend you know you dope sometimes maybe you make a song you know it's a dope song but because you're not hearing on the radio you think ah actually the song is not bad but actually you know like no man this song like is 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 good you know so drop the songs use the internet shoot a music video for your song start your youtube page have it on there you know um shane ego he has shane ego now what he what he wanted what he wanted to do as well remember he was a presenter at v entertainment if you were to ask him why the hell were you presenting? And you, and you explain to you and say, no, it was part of the Shane Eagle brand. I had to present so people can see my face all the time. So by the time I drop music, you know exactly who I am. You know what you, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, he used to rap on the hustle. He was a, now and now he's gold, selling gold. Shout out to him. You know, so it's just uh, putting out your stuff there. Shoot your own videos. Um, do your stuff on the internet. But at the same time, keep submitting. Because what happens sometimes is um, a lot of the internet kids, when they blow up, they get too caught in the streets and they forget and they forget about the other stuff. You know, how many times have you heard people say Aries doesn't answer con- calls for whatever for, for interviews? Aries doesn't want to send radio edits for 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 radio and whatever. And to the kids, to his fans, that's cool. But in the bigger scale of things. It is not cool. Why would you like? Why? Do, why is it cool to not answer your phone? Why wouldn't you want another check? That that is not. That's so why I say the internet sometimes, you know, sort of. So you also as a person gotta gotta think about it and say, okay, but that doesn't make sense. You know, you're you're allowed to feel that way as an upcoming artist. Don't ever think that um, I'm coming. Why everything makes sense? You're allowed to be like, no, man, that doesn't make sense. Evening guys, my name is Cap Michaels, I'm a singer, rapper, and songwriter. Uh, so many questions, so little time. Um, first question is, I'm still performing. That's the first question. Oh, you can play the song, so you're not performing. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be out listening to all your songs, if you have them here on the Orcs, whatever, we can, you know, go through them. I will give you feedback. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Second question is, why is it so hard to get on radio, even for like big art acts like you? Because I, I completely don't understand, because there was a deal that play 80% or 90% local music, but that's still not happening. 
we're still playing a lot of international music not a lot of like but local it, it, it did go back to the to the to the, to the, the normal man which is, i think is 60 40. yeah yeah are you asking why it's like that yeah i'm asking why is um, it like that that's that's just the big corporate uh, the big corporates because they've they've at the end of the day they've, they've got to sell advertising time and they believe that if they're playing more local stuff people are listening to the station therefore they're not getting money to they're not generating any money through advertising so that's 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 why it happens but it also happens because remember as we mentioned earlier hip-hop isn't our biggest genre as south africans so you gotta it goes back to a numbers thing so you find we'll use a metro fm as an example where they have 10 million listeners and you find that eight million of those listeners either love gospel or they love maskandi or they love ama piano or whatever you know so therefore metro fm has got to accommodate those people because those are the people that are actually listening back to that real life thing where numbers like actually show you know so you may think that you on twitter and whatever you're booming but you actually find out that nobody actually knows who you are do you, do you know do you know what i mean so that's how we find ourselves in in, in in that situation and it's gonna be like that as long as back to the authenticity thing comes in again as long as we're trying to sound american as long as we're you know doing the same things that the other guys are doing we're still going to stay really small because not most of our people will be able to relate to it and again um i don't know it all i'm just that's what i think yeah i, I get I, I i get your opinion just one thing but as far as like originality and how hip-hop is going in south africa isn't it a lot of South African music is becoming more international. You get your Nasty C's, your Big Hash, your Shane Eagles, your the list goes on and on. You get what I'm saying? We're all rapping in English because English is one of our languages. Is because isn't like hip hop is that much diverse in South Africa that we do have international hip hop sounding music and we do have hip hop that sounds African. Because you can't classify it as not in like South African sound anymore. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I think I think it's it's like we, I guess well I I grew up like that where it's like maybe like you only have certain information you only know to a certain point or you're only told to a certain point right like nobody ever told me when you're making music like think about the music being to the world when when we're making a song we're thinking yo I can't wait to rock this thing at Zone Six kind of a thing you know so I think it's also with us putting out like changing our mentality and, and 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 saying look man yes i live here yes i'm from here whatever but this that i'm making right now is something i want to sell to the world because once you're able to do that once you start traveling like i travel a lot right and that's why if you listen to the new song now i every time i travel and i play the mayo and no stress or whatever they're like yeah it's dope it's it's cool you know but they have so much of it going on there and that's why I've sort of identified like, oh, okay, you gotta stand, like, you need to understand that you're making this thing for the world. It needs to be relatable to the world. There's this something that stands out about it to the whole world, not just to South Africa. So, um, yeah, I, I, I guess we also just, we gotta, we gotta start thinking big. So when you're, when you're making a song and you're about to say, nigga hood, remember that there's, I don't know how many millions of people that are probably doing the same thing as you, if not better, you know, so, Maybe say, Kasi Otiaka, or something, you know what I mean? As opposed to a niggerhood um, kind of a vibe. And always, always have it at the back of your head that when you're submitting your song, or when you release that song, you're taking it to radio, you're not just taking it to YFM, you're taking the song to Hot 97. Like, have that mentality, you, like, when you're making the music, even when you're distributing the music. Don't just send your music to Metro FM, send it to Hot 97 as well, if you think it's authentic to you, your South African sound. Because I think, I mean, now more than ever, we've seen Shoma Josie's doing it. Trevor Noah, there we go. Black Coffee, you know. I think now more than ever, we would be fools to not see that whatever we're doing is is, is it, it can be like great for the world, not just for South Africans. So, evening, guys. Uh, my name is Tub Zero. Um, I don't have a question really. Speedster, I just want to big up, dog. Um, I think I remember. It was back in 2008 when you had a song with Sifo, I think. Is it Get It? 
is uh, Don't Worry About Me. Yeah, yeah. 2012, yeah. 12, yeah. But seeing how you've managed to grow your brand from there, dog, like, like, you are an inspiration, dog. As much as Clownbear, you don't get to hear that every day, but we look up to you, G, and. Thank you. Yeah, keep shining, dog. Thank keep you. shining. I appreciate it. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, hello guys, Njabulo. Um, real quick, Speedstar, um, top five songs in your playlist. Personal playlist, not radio, not for club, personal. Right now? Right now. Damn. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be dead honest about my top five. Let's see what I played last. Let's see. <laughs> they, you know, they are some yenos, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so one of the songs that I'm really enjoying right now is Wale and Jeremiah's On Chill. Uh, I don't know if you know what that sounds like. This piece is an R&B cat. Yeah, you, I, you, I you love got, like, you, gotta understand you know that, me, I love guys. my, my it's slow an stuff. It's an R&B cat. Uh, brand new Whiskey, it's called Ghetto Love. I'm really liking that. Hmm. What else we got here? Uh, Watch the Throne, No Church in the Wild. I uh, brought it back like last month. I've been bumping it again. And then I've got DJ Zinkler's Umlilo. And then I've got uh, Aglalegi, uh, son, uh, what's his name? Right. Something Soweto. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm currently bumping right now. Um, right. South African hip hop has been tricky. Yo, you, you know, you, you, you're not gonna mention your, the single you dropped last week? Oh yeah, Come I'm on, listening man. to that the whole day. I'm listening yeah. to my new single the whole day. <laughs> but something also very exciting, like, like I say, I personally say, South African hip hop hasn't been exciting for me this year, but I'm actually going to uh, KO's album listening session after this, so I'm I'm looking forward to hearing what what we can hear and what um what's coming up. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what you guys got. Yeah, let's do it. All right, yo. Before we get there, though, show some love for DJ Spisa, man. Thank you for dropping so that much. knowledge on us. 